All right, with this, we're gonna wrap up this course. This was an introduction to JavaScript. We covered some of the basics of uh, data types, objects, and functions in JavaScript and how to work with them uh, in order to do some simple programming. Uh, I'm now gonna talk about some of the next steps. You have just scratched the surface of JavaScript by covering this course, unfortunately. There's a lot more to JavaScript. We need to learn about uh, objects and constructors, how to create new objects and what the, this argument means when it comes to constructing and using those objects. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about some of those important concepts. Uh, the next concepts that you need to learn about are scopes and closures. I'll be creating a separate JavaScript course which covers scopes and closures in more detail. Once that course is up, I will provide a link to that course in the description of this video or on the, you know, on the tutorial page on the website so that you can go and check that course out next. Uh, there's also concepts on objects and prototypes, which is what I talked about, right? Creating new objects and uh, the, the way you can simulate the concept of classes in JavaScript. JavaScript does not have classes, but there's an equivalent to classes using the concept of prototypes. Again, this is gonna be a course that I'm gonna create and link to this page once the course is ready. The next concept to really uh, understand is asynchronous JavaScript. JavaScript is actually single-threaded, and this idea usually comes as a surprise to somebody who has coded in C++ or Java for a while. Uh, they fail to understand the, the different way of thinking that you have to implement JavaScript with because of the fact that it's single-threaded. You don't have multiple threads. You cannot just spawn a thread and do things in parallel. So because of the fact that JavaScript is single-threaded, it's very important to write asynchronous JavaScript if you wanna have responsive programs. So there is this whole concept on callbacks and promises that I will be creating a separate course on, hopefully, and uh, I'll link to this page when it's ready again. And uh, even if that course is not ready yet and you wanna explore this, this is an important concept for you to understand when you're dealing with more complex JavaScript. Uh, there's also uh, client-side frameworks that you can learn. Now that you have some basic understanding of JavaScript, you can move on to concepts like uh, frameworks like AngularJS, jQuery, React, Backbone, and all those client-side frameworks in order to do client-side programming. And uh, finally, you, you can look at server-side frameworks to do server-side programming. So this involves Node.js and Express, and you can use JavaScript code running on the server which serves out uh, web pages using MVC. So these are some of the places you can, you know, places and topics you can explore. As I create courses covering some of these concepts, I will link it to the page uh, that you're watching right now. It's either on the YouTube page or the tutorial page on Java Brains. So if you see that uh, while you're watching this, definitely check them out. Or if you don't see them yet, definitely look up uh, a lot of good material on this is available online, so look them up and um, hope you enjoy your uh, journey of continuing to learn JavaScript. And I hope this course was helpful. Thanks for checking this out. Again, I'm Kashik Kotagal, and this was JavaScript for Developers.